Oh. Hello again. Uh, so this is my report um, as the church's representative at the Unitarian General Assembly uh, about what was said and done there and what we've learned from it. Uh, I know that some of you have been to the GA and some have not. I thought it would be a good idea if I gave a short presentation uh, on what the GA is, why we send a representative and what we get out of it. And then I'll do a quick uh, recap of some of the things that were there. I say some of the things because there is so much going on, it's impossible for one person to see absolutely every bit of it. So I think of this as a sort of edited highlight. So, just to cover quickly what I'll be talking about, uh, what is the GA, why we send a representative, what we get out of it, which is running the National Unitarian Movement, what the Executive Committee and the various strategy groups are doing, uh, new thinking that's coming out of the GA, uh, and the worship and socialising that takes place. I've written down a few ideas I had whilst I was there on what we might do as part following the GA based on further ideas that were there. Uh, and I've also put some useful links in. Uh, I'll be sending around the presentation as well, so if people want to look at the links, you can see them there. So, some of you will know this, but as a quick recap, um, the General Assembly, as it's, well, in the usual way that the term, in the usual way that the term GA is used, uh, the General Assembly of Unitarian and Free Christian Churches uh, as happens at the meeting in Birmingham, is the equivalent of our church, uh, our church's annual general meeting. It's the annual meeting of all members, uh, and it's where necessary business is transacted as required by charity law. It allows us to meet our executive committee, uh, which is the national movement's equivalent of the church's management committee, and learn what's planned for the future and what the national movement can offer us. Um, it's funded through income from various sources, investments, legacies, property rents and quota member payments. Each church makes an annual quota payment of around £35 per member of the church. I thought it would also be useful to recap out why we send a representative. Uh, as I said, it's about participating in running the national movement. As the church's representative, I have a vote. Uh, and it's about learning what support CEC can offer us in the coming year. Find out new thinking in theology, spirituality and worship. Um, bringing back new books and worship materials. I have brought back quite a lot of them uh, and I'll put them on the table at the back. Um, hearing updates on existing initiatives and on work done following motions at the previous year's assembly. Gathering new ideas uh, at workshops, including about publicity and about improving our website. Uh, catching up with friends and building networks, uh, and worship and socialising. So, quite a large part of the GA is taken up with plenary sessions, about five in total, uh, in which we hear reports uh, on various aspects of the national movement's running, uh, and we also vote on motions uh, before the GA. Um, one proposal was to make the GA three days long, not four days, to make it easier for working people and students and people with family and other caring responsibilities to be able to come down and attend. Uh, I spoke in favour of that in the session because I would quite like some of our new members to come down and help with us make it easier. Uh, we also had motions this year. One was proposed um, by David and Hazel Walker at Stockton uh, asking churches to write to the government uh, about a resident of County Durham, Eileen Fennel, uh, who unfortunately has been deported from the UK and whom they're trying to support. We also had a motion of support for the Coptic churches of Egypt following uh, the attacks on them in recent days. The GA uh, also welcomes new ministers who have graduated and marks the contribution of others. Uh, Russ Smith Reid uh, was named an honorary member of the General Assembly in recognition of his contribution to Unitarianism in Great Britain and abroad. Uh, and finally, we also invested our president, of the, our next president of the General Assembly, uh, Charles Van, Van den Broder. Uh, and if you look at the picture at the top, uh, you can just see him about to be presented with the presidential medal.
So the part of this is finding out what the executive committee and the various unitarian strategy groups are doing. Uh, as I say, there were some workshops I was not able to attend, but the ones I was able to go to included one about the web project, which is setting up a new website, uh, Space for Search, uh, which is a new website for people seeking spiritual answers. Uh, there's also a project about lifelong learning and development for all, uh, thinking about Unitarian ministers, leaders and members learning needs. The Executive Committee also held a workshop talking about how Vision 2020 is going, uh, next steps from vision to action. Uh, the visibility group, uh, you can see James Barry at the bottom, uh, ironically talking about visibility whilst being in a rather badly focused process. Um, and talking about improving congregational websites, giving every church uh, that has worked their website that they can edit themselves. And there's also a new Ministry and Congregational Support Officer, Simon Bland, uh, who has encouraged us to contact him if we need advice and support on selling the building and moving into a new home. Some new ideas as well. Uh, the John Riley Beard Lecture traditionally opens the General Assembly. This year's was held by uh, Reverend Carla Groschmuller, who is a URC minister, and her topic was Fifty Shades of Grace, Sex and Progressive Christianity, which was very well attended. The keynote speaker was uh, Rev. Dr. Ralph Waller, who is the principal of Harris Manchester College, speaking on, great title, muddling through leading organisations in today's world. It's also a good chance to find out about Unitarian courses and holidays. The Foy Society's weekend uh, focusing on inequality is coming up at the end of the month. Uh, there's also things like summer school, LEAP, which is the leadership course led uh, by Margaret from the Stockton Church. Uh, you can see her wearing a rather nice t-shirt um, in the picture at the bottom, uh, trying to encourage people to learn more leadership skills. Uh, and some workshops on uh, new ideas people have tried. Um, one of those is Darby Unity, which I think is a very interesting project. As part of Vision 2020, uh, they gave funding out to go and set up a new organisation in Derby, um, which was linked to, but not part of the Derby Unitarians. Essentially trying to, I suppose you would say, create a spiritual, they call it a gathering, a spiritual gathering, similar to our services, but essentially for people who are, who would generally describe themselves as not religious and not church people. It's about trying to introduce people to spirituality, bearing in mind that in the modern world, many people have simply never walked through the doors of a church and often have quite a stereotypical, perhaps that's overly harsh, perhaps a very traditional or conservative idea of what churches can be like. So that's quite an interesting project, and I think there's some things we could learn from it. And you can tell that I'm reaching the end of this report, uh, because I'm now talking about worship and socialising, which is a big part of the GA, because it lets that you catch up with people you haven't seen for a while. There's the Monday evening worship service. Uh, this year it looked at the history of Unitarianism in Wales. There'll probably be a video of that on UK Unitarian TV. And I do recommend it because it was widely voted, I think, well, unofficially voted as one of the best services we've had at the GA for a while. There are morning and evening services. Uh, there's an impromptu GA choir, which you can see singing away in the middle picture. I didn't join in because I had a cold and it didn't seem fair to inflict that on everybody else around me. And the social evening was my, was my music, which you can just see at the bottom. That's a quick tour to this year's General Assembly uh, and what the GA in general uh, involves. These are some ideas I have for our church, which we can discuss in more detail. Um, something I think we could look at doing is perhaps taking some action of the church on the emotions that were proposed. 
we could certainly, for example, write say a letter about Irene. Well, we could first we could read about and discuss the case of Irene for now, and if we feel it's appropriate, write a letter in support of her case to the Home Secretary, asking them to look again at her case and consider whether she could be allowed to return to the UK uh, and her family who are here. Um, in terms of publicity and outreach, which is obviously my personal interest. Uh, we could look at contributing to the new um, space to search website and perhaps also look um, at what we could learn from Derby Unity. My own view was that I thought there's a lot we could learn. I don't think we can duplicate their model because theirs is almost a humanist perspective. And whilst I think it's fair to say we have room for humanist perspectives within the church, I think we also quite like to look at traditional religious ideas as well. Uh, so I think we should look at what we can learn from Derby. It was a very, very interesting workshop. Um, something else that came out in terms of publicity is that a lot of people who have joined churches have done so because they want to be involved in social action. We've got uh, our collection for Joseph Cowan. Uh, a couple of things that are coming up that we could think about is we've been invited to march with the York Unitarians at York Pride uh, coming up in June. Uh, there's the Interface Peace Walk in the, um, no, September, coming up later this year. Um, and perhaps, not immediately, but in the future, we could look at whether there's any local charities we might like to work with. And finally, uh, I did wonder, um, some of you may have seen pictures of our new member Kirsten uh, spending a week wearing a wedding dress uh, to show her support for a charity called Girls Not Brides, which works to end the practice of child marriage. I was thinking perhaps we could look at maybe submitting a motion to the GA, uh, perhaps on that line, or perhaps in relation to another cause that matters to all of us. So that is my report on General Assembly of this year. I hope it was useful. Uh, there are some useful links here and also some pictures from the setting, which is rather beautiful. Uh, I'll send down the slides, and if anyone's got questions, uh, I'm happy to hear them. Any questions? <coughs> Well, what sort of numbers of tenants nowadays? Uh, um, about 300. Right. Roughly, I suppose you'd say a tenth of the coastal national. Yeah, it's all mingle and talk and see the session. Yeah. Something I did think was quite encouraging is that there was quite a nice mix of ages there. Um, I think I think possibly the attendance there is perhaps slightly skewed towards people who are retired for the simple reason that taking off Monday to Thursday is difficult to do if you're working, mm -hmm. uh, which is partly why personally I support the move to a three days year. Mm -hmm. But there were quite a few people <coughs> from younger age groups as well. So that was quite interesting. I mean it's helpful for the congregation to know that if there are controversial motions mm -hmm. to come up with PG and anything, then we get advance notice of it so the committee can discuss in advance what our approach might be to either give an indication to our voting delegate as to how we think it ought to go or alternatively say entirely your own discretion as to how we deal with it. But we do get advance notice of these things and we can discuss them in advance of sending delegates to the meeting. <coughs> Thank you, thank you very much for this going on with you. Yeah, well, I've managed well, not to fall over it two times on it, so I think we'll manage it just well, one time. The fourth time is always the hard one. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank